My name is Nelmi Asi Luo. I'm the founder and CEO of Folia Health, and my co founder Dan is in the audience somewhere or taught up there, just taking photos. I, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited to uh, talk with you all here tonight. I've actually been, um, it's not my first time presenting about my company at a female founder event at District Hall, which is very cool, and I've actually only been in business for a little over a year. Um, and so it's pretty awesome. I think the Boston uh, ecosystem has been great for us uh, female founders. I've, I've found that we have a lot of um, places to be heard here, so it's, it's great. Uh, so to give you a little bit of a background on what Folia is and why I'm working on it. So um, I think one of our experts mentioned that everybody here tonight has a personal story behind what they're working on and why. Uh, for me, I've been uh, really interested in chronic disease treatment um, since I was about 15. I know it's a little bit weird. <laughs> it's going to be better than it less weird. Uh, so uh, the, the reason that I'm interested in this is because I have, I'm the oldest of seven kids. I grew up in Buffalo, New York. And um, in my family, we have a very interesting condition. So my younger brother, uh, who's the second oldest, has something called CVID, it's common variable immune deficiency. It's kind of similar to bubble boy syndrome, but less severe. It's like not being able to knock out an infection that you get. Um, and then as actually more of my siblings were born, we found that more and more people had some interesting, not the same condition, but interesting other immune conditions. And so I spent a lot of my life um, happily not really impacted by these conditions, but watching my parents figure out how to deal with um, an ever-changing medical landscape. Um, and my brother was diagnosed with his condition in 1996. The condition hadn't even been named what it's currently named in 2002. Um, let's see. In, in over that period of time, the treatments, as you might imagine, were changing very rapidly. And uh, my parents were bringing us all over the Northeast, going to different types of uh, specialists, trying to understand what was going on, what the newest best treatment was. Uh, they were lucky, we were lucky, because my parents had jobs that allowed them to do that. My parents were well educated, so they were able to fully understand what was going on in the appointments, and they were able to advocate for themselves. Despite that, it was still very hard um, to figure out what the condition was that my brother had and how to treat it. Um, and amazingly, it's 20 years, 22 years after 1996, it hasn't changed that much for people going through a chronic disease journey. I'm sure many of you have done that. About half of all people in the US have a chronic condition. And out of that, approximately one third of people who are ultimately diagnosed with a chronic condition wait two or more years for diagnosis. Um, once you figure out the diagnosis, it's hard to figure out how to treat it. And the reason for that was something I was very interested in figuring out. So when I went to college, I focused on chronic disease treatment. The interesting thing is that we actually don't have very much information about chronic disease treatment. So you think about it, we know that penicillin works, and the reason is because it's really easy to quantify, right? So you get sick, your doctor takes a culture, they take a little blood, they grow some bacteria, they say, oh, you have strep throat. And so they give, they give you an antibiotic that they've literally put on that dish to see if it will kill what you have. It's really easy to quantify. For a chronic condition, it's much more complicated to understand what it is that you have and then also how to treat it and then once you treat it, is the treatment working? Uh, especially when it's a collection of symptoms, if it's a syndrome or if it's something that isn't really well understood, like autism, it's really hard to know if anything is actually moving the needle on the treatment, uh, on, on the symptoms, if any of the treatments are actually working. And so what happens is we don't make very many uh, new treatments very quickly. We don't have a very fast innovation cycle. So I was really interested in that. How do we fix that, right? And something that I noticed, and this, is, and this didn't all happen overnight, this is a period of a decade, <laughs> thinking about this. What I noticed eventually was that my mom knew a ton about what my little brother had dealt with every day at home, what treatments were working, which ones were not. How do you take that information and bring it back to the healthcare system so we can say, actually, we do have a data set on what's working in chronic disease treatment and what's not, and we can quantify the impact of those treatments. It's just that that information is in the minds of the patients and families that are experiencing the condition on a daily basis, and we haven't ever asked them. And so what we do at Folia is we've built a platform that makes it very easy for patients and family members to track on a daily basis their outcomes of care, how they're doing, what symptoms and behaviors they're experiencing, what treatments they're using. If they're not using a treatment, we don't assume that they're lazy. We ask them 
why they're not using the treatment and what's wrong with it, what could be done better with the treatment. And what we've learned, uh, what we've learned over one year of being uh, launched, we, we're focused right now on cystic fibrosis, um, is that people really want to share this information. And so um, we are currently hiring. Uh, we're expanding outside of cystic fibrosis um, this coming year, and we would love to have more women at the company. I'm the founder and CEO. Uh, we have two men who work with me. We would love to have more women. We are hiring uh, roles in product marketing, in uh, data analysis, and in UX and product design. Thank you very much for listening. I can take two questions. Yeah, so I love that question. Um, Cystic fibrosis found us as a community. Mm -hmm. uh, we were actually planning to work in immune deficiency, which is my brother's condition. And uh, I was at an event just like this for the Mass Challenge um, Health Tech application launch last year, or I guess it was last year. And uh, a dad came up to me who was there for his work and he said, I heard what you we were doing and this would be great for cystic fibrosis. And at that time, we were still trying to figure out who we were going to work with in, in, in immune deficiency. And we, we decided to go to an event that they were sponsoring um, up in Maine for cystic fibrosis patients there. And we found that the community was really strong and was really interested. So they kind of just uh, kind of clicked. Yeah. Hi, Jessica. Um, so do you have any other questions? Oh, yeah. What are you hiring for? Uh, yeah, so we're hiring product marketing, uh, UX and product design, and data analysis. Great. Thank you. Thank you.